This is my fourth time to read the presentation. How how will fun life on other planets? The presentation from Ted T D. So let's start. I'm in search of another planet in the universe where life exists. I can't see this planet with my naked eyes or even with most powerful telescopes we currently possess. But I know that it's there, and understanding contradictions can occur in nature can help us find it. On our planet, where there's water, there's life. So we look for planets that orbit at just the right distance from their stars. At this distance, shown in blue on this diagram for stars of different temperatures, planets could be warm enough for water to flow on their surfaces as lakes and oceans where life might reside. Some astronomers focus their time and energy on finding planets at this distance from their stars. And I do pick up where the job ends. I model the possible climates of exoplanets, and here's why that's important. There are many factors besides distance from a star that control whether a planet can support life. Take the planet Venus. It's named after the Roman goddess of love and beauty, and because of is near, ethereal appearance in the sky, but spacecraft measurements reveal a different story. The surface temperature is close to 900 Fahrenheit, 500 Celsius, and that's hot enough to melt lead. It's thin atmosphere, n not its distance from the sun is the reason. It causes a greenhouse effect on steroids, trapping heat from the sun and scorching the planet's surface. The reality totally contradicts the initial perceptions of this planet. From these lessons from our own solar system, we'll, we've learned that a planet's atmosphere is crucial to its climate and potential to host life. We don't know what the, the atmosphere of this planet are like because the planets are, are so small and dim compared to their stars and so far away from us. For example, one of the closest planets that could support surface water is called Ginseng 667 cc, such as glamorous name. Right, nice phone number for the name. It's 23 light years away, so it's more than 100 trillion miles. Trying to measure the atmospheric composition of an exoplanet passing in front of its house star is hard, and it's like trying to see a fruit fly passing in front of a car's headlight, okay? Now you match a car 100 trillion miles away, and you want to know the precise color of that fly. So I use computer models to calculate the, the kind of atmosphere a planet could need to have a suitable climate for water and life. Here's an ar artist's concept of the planet Kepler 62f with Earth's reference. It's 1200 light years away and just 40% larger than Earth. Our NSF finally work found that it could be warm enough for open water from many types of atmospheres and uh, orientations of its orbit. So I like the future telescopes to follow up this planet to look for signs of life. Ice on plan planet surface are so important for climate. Ice absorbs longer radar wavelengths of light and reflects shorter blue light. That's why the iceberg in this photo looks so blue. The radar light from the sun is absorbed on its way through the ice. Only the blue light makes all the way to the bottom, and then it gets reflected back up to our eyes and we see blue ice. My model shows that planets orbiting the cooler stars could be actually warmer than planets orbiting hotter stars. That's another contradiction. Ice absorbs the longer wavelength light from cooler stars and that light energy hits the ice.
using climate models to explore how these contradictions can affect planetary climate is vital to the search for life elsewhere. And it's no surprise that this is my specialty. I'm a African American female astronomer that classically trained an actor who loved to wear makeup and read fashion magazines. So I'm uniquely positioned to appreciate contradictions in nature and how, how they can inform our search for the next planet where life exists. My organization, Rising Star Girls, teaches astronomy to middle school girls of color using theater, writing, and visual art. That's another contradiction. Science and art do not often go together, but interweaving them can help these girls bring their whole self to what they learn. Maybe one day join the rank astronomers who are full of contradictions and use their background to discover once and, and for all that we are truly not alone in the universe. Thank you.